Hi, I'm Carrie with eatingonadime.com and today I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite crock pot recipes. It's three ingredients and you're going to love it. Hello, today I'm showing you how to make three ingredient pork chops. This is my favorite way to make pork chops. You throw it in the crock pot with two extra ingredients and the flavor is amazing. So if you're joining me, let me know what is your favorite thing to make in the crock pot? Your crock pot is not just for soups, stews, and chilies. It actually can make some really flavorful food, including pork chops. Um, if you would like the recipe, I do have the link in the description. You can say, hey, send me the recipe, we'll send it to you. Or you can go to eatingonadime.com and you can search um, crockpot ranch pork chops, or you can just type in ranch pork chops in the search bar and it'll pull up for you. It's three ingredients and it's crazy easy to make. Okay, so let me show you how simple this is. We got our crockpot. Any crockpot will work. You can do a programmable crockpot. I just have a basic crockpot today. And then you need pork chops. Today I'm making boneless pork chops, but any pork chops will work. You can do bone in, you can do the boneless. Um, my sister and I were actually talking about it before this video that a uh, pork tenderloin would be amazing with this recipe. Or if you just don't like pork at all, chicken would be delicious with the simple recipes too. So as you can see, I'm just loading up it on the bottom. I just laid them flat. Now I'm only doing four pork chops today because we're eating this for lunch, but you could do, I have filled this up with the pork chops. Then we're going to, we need one package of seasoning mix. Um, I also do have a homemade version for homemade ranch mix. If you would like that recipe as well, I will include that in the description, but you can also say, hey, I want that homemade ranch mix as well. So you could just do a store-bought, but if you're wanting to save some money or if you need it to be gluten-free, I can't remember if this is gluten-free or not, but if you need it to be gluten-free, we have that recipe as well. So we're just gonna sprinkle this right on top of the pork chops. Boop. Get out of here. And then the, the last, but the most important ingredient, maybe it's not the most important, when you have three ingredients, you kind of need all of them, would be one stick of butter. This is making the buttery ranch sauce that tastes amazing over these pork chops. So the biggest problem you have when you're cooking pork chops, you know, just traditionally in um, like on a skillet or a stove or you're grilling them is overcooking them. And obviously in a crock pot, you're gonna cook them a little bit longer than you normally would. And so the butter keeps your pork, pork chops nice and moist so they don't kind of taste dried out. You still will have really flavorful pork chops at the end of the day. Now, done. See how easy that is? Our food does not have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be difficult to make delicious food. So you throw this in the morning and then you come home and this is done. The original recipe calls for, let's see, four, wait, yeah, four to six pork chops. So this is gonna be just this, you would have enough ranch mix and enough butter for up to six servings. So one pork chop per person. So if you need more pork chops, then yes, I would increase it, you know, double it, or maybe increase it by half. And honestly, you could probably just increase your butter in half and leave the ranch mix and it would be a little bit less flavorful but there's a lot of flavor here, so I think you'll be okay. It's really simple. I've been making this recipe for as long as I can remember, and the kids love it, and it's my favorite way to make pork chops. So let's talk about what we're gonna serve this with. We have some options. My favorite would be the mashed potatoes and some kind of green, like a green bean, um, broccoli, or like asparagus, because the buttery ranch sauce is amazing over mashed potatoes and some kind of a green vegetable. It is also really good over egg noodles. So you could just boil up some quick egg noodles and that butter, garlic buttery sauce, you could even add a little Parmesan cheese. And that would be amazing as well. So there's lots of options to take this basic recipe and make it your own. I will say, what is, how long do you cook Christina broccoli when you um, 
like put it in your crock pot? Um, 15 minutes on high or 30 minutes on low? I okay. So another really great option is you could throw in some fresh broccoli, right? Not frozen. Yeah. Either way. Either way would work. But I just want to make sure my numbers were right because I was going to say about 30 minutes. So what I would do, another really easy option so you do not have to dirty up another pan, is you could boil your egg noodles, but then you could just throw in some fresh broccoli on top of these pork chops about 30 minutes before you're ready to serve. Now, if you like your broccoli a little softer than we do, you might want to extend that to 45 minutes to an hour. Um, you know, some people like their broccoli nice and soggy, and that's okay. But you're going to get that ranch butter sauce all over your broccoli. And guess what? Your kids are going to eat it because it's really, really good. It's so good over broccoli and asparagus and green beans. So super simple, super easy. It doesn't have to be complicated. Another thing you could do that we have done in the past is we have taken baked potatoes. So we have taken our russet potato, washed them, poked them with a fork, wrap them with foil, and then throw them on top like right now. I would do it right now. And then let it cook all day. So you have your buttery sauce, pork chops, and then a baked potato that you could serve on side. And it's all being cooked inside the same crock pot, which means one cooking device, which means one thing to clean. So it's kind of a win-win. We're going to shoot for six to eight hours on low for this. But if you're using the Instapot Aurora, it does run kind of hot. So in general, you're going to need to shorten your time on those usually. So what did you say? Four to five hours? Mm -hmm. I would do four, plan for four to five hours. But it's nice. The Instapot Aurora, it'll automatically go to warm um, when it's finished. So if you're going to do four hours, but you're still at home, you know, you're still at work, it'll keep it nice and warm for you. And we do have our... My sister and I love this. She introduced this to me because um, I used to have the old school ones with the little dial forever. And she introduced me to this digital meat thermometer. Um, we got this on Amazon. I can include a link in the description or you can say, hey, can you send me the link um, and we can send it to you. But it's less than $20 and it's great because it even tells you what temperature it needs to be at. So you don't even have to remember. So it tells you what it needs to be at a ham, beef, ground beef, or poultry. So it's kind of nice. But you just stick it right in there just to make sure it's nice and done. She uses the most with pork. I like to use it with chicken a lot when I'm grilling chicken because I have a tendency to overcook my chicken when I grill it because I'm always so nervous. So I just whip this out and I'm like, oh, nope, you're good. Um, so that way you have nice juicy chicken. So this has come in handy and it also comes in handy during the holidays when you're doing a lot of cooking. Um, so if you do not have one of these, I kind of recommend it. It's a nice investment. And by investment, I mean $20 or less on Amazon. So, and you can always just look up digital meat thermometer. Okay, guys. Crock pot ranch pork chops. So simple, so easy. Um, anybody can do it. I want you to try it today. If you make this, make sure you, if you're on Instagram, I would love it if you would tag me so I can see how your pork chops turn out and what you made with it. That way I can share it with my people. Um, and that's it. So if you want the link for the recipe, go ahead and say it below and we will send it to you. Thanks so much for watching me today. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our future recipe videos. And don't forget, the link is in the description for the full recipe. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye, friends. <laughs>